in telling the story, you, you physically feel better. I do. Um, and then in the hopes that it might actually help someone else understand, I think people forget what happened here. We, we have to do good. I want to be part of something good, so I'm moving forward, and that's why I'm talking to you today. I want people to be able to see people for who they are. You know, a lot of time we walk around with masks on. We want people to see what we perceive ourselves to be. What you're seeing on these walls are those masks coming off. This is who people are behind what we let everyone on the street see of us. I want, some, I want people to be able to keep that in mind that we, this is humanity. This is who we are at the core. Whether you're experiencing anguish or joy, you know, we only show people what we want them to see. I, I don't know what people are gonna take from, from the exhibit. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I've been to, I'm sure there'll be a lot of tears. I'm sure there'll be a lot of, you know, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that part of the story. I, I found myself as I, talked to colleagues and, and, and met with students or even just it, it came up come up in class that next you know month six months eight months anguish in the aftermath is a new exhibit by local photographer and marjorie stoneman douglas alumni ian whitland the purpose of the exhibit is to tell the stories of the victims of the february 14th tragedy and shed some light on what some of these teachers and students went through on that day so at, with every interview um, someone would come in, uh, I would give them probably about an hour and 20 minutes a lot of time and if we needed to, they, they were not rushed. Um, everyone got the same two questions, which is uh, to tell me what you experienced, um, your personal experience on February 14th, as much as little as you want to tell me. And the second question is, what would you like to see come of this? So what you see on the walls is completely unposed. They are raw emotional moments that uh, the camera's timestamp and the audio recorder's timestamp are in sync with each other. So when I was able to go back and pull a photo uh, that to me evoked a lot of emotion, I could say, well, why? What were they discussing in that moment? And then pull the exact audio from that moment and pair it with each piece. Hour 20 minutes in that closet, we start and we hear some rustling outside. We hear, well, I heard some glass break and that's when everyone went silent. And we got 55 kids in there and five adults. There was five adults. We talked about Sandy Hook. We talked about Virginia Tech. We talked about what we would do if something did happen. I saw Joaquin, who was about six feet behind me, go down. And he went down. I'm like, that kid isn't an actor. It's always beneficial to know somebody else's point of view. In this case, my experience is different than others. So I want, I want to know what it's like to be in their shoes compared to what it was like to be in mine. Sharing my story has um, helped me cope because people know more about it. You, you don't really see a lot of people in the world that have to go through what we had to go through. And with them knowing our stories, with them knowing our stories, they know that we're still people and we still have lives. We, we still have something. I, I'm sure there's gonna be people in the community that don't wanna see it and I understand that. And then there's gonna be people who come through this who want to know more. And it's, it's truly for those people who would like to understand everything. Um, I don't have the answers to every question. That, that people might ask from this, um, but they'll get a, a good sampling of information from each person's interview uh, into what they've gone through. We kind of live in a society of, you know, fast service, digital, quick headlines and, you know, sound clips and stuff like that. It's, it's not, it doesn't stick with you, it doesn't stay with you. So I thought, if I look for that and I record audio while I'm documenting, I might be able to pair the two together and create something a bit different. It's not a documentary, but it is documentation. This is humanity. This is, it's people.
people. I think Ian, Ian's one of the, I mean, you know, a lot of the relationships that we built after, you know, the incident, Ian's, Ian's someone that I, again, I didn't know personally beforehand, and now I consider him a really good friend. I met him after the shootings, and I found that he was a really nice guy, and I wanted to help him, and I thought it might be a good thing to be part of. I observe and report. That's what I do. I wanted to give everybody the opportunity to speak their minds, not be judged, not be asked a laundry list of questions, give everyone the same two questions and just have a space to say whatever they want to say. Incredible and devastating, anguish in the aftermath is a timeless display of emotion that all should see.